G'day from Dublin on a cool grey day as we look at what cars the drivers drove to the track in Belgium. Straight up front, some of the drivers stay at the track in motorhomes, so they don't have to worry about long drives. They're essentially camped inside the track limits. Getting to and from the track though, especially on busy days like the Saturdays and Sundays, can be very time consuming as I found out on Sunday night. So let's have a look at what the drivers drove to the track at Spa. Kicking it off with Lewis Hamilton and he came in in the same car that he drove to the last race, the one prior to the uh, summer break and that is a Mercedes-Benz EQC 400. This is an electric vehicle. I should have turned that off, shouldn't I? This is an electric vehicle, very smooth, quiet, and sleek. Uh, he doesn't drive, Angela Cullen drives, and uh, interestingly on Sunday, Angela pulled up at the swipe gates, about to drop Lewis off, and then for some reason took off, so we didn't actually get to see Lewis getting out of that EQC 400. But we did on the Friday when he came in wearing this Balenciaga outfit. His teammate is Valtteri Bottas. Valtteri was staying also in a motorhome. He had his girlfriend Tiffany Cromwell with him. And they drove to the swipe gates in a black Mercedes GLE. It's worth about 60,000 pounds if you're buying one in England. Uh, later on, after the pair of them, uh, Valtteri and Tiffany, entered the paddock, Tiffany then took off back uh, out to the car and headed off somewhere. I don't know where. They weren't the only drivers driving Mercedes-Benz cars this week. If you hang around, I'll tell you who else was driving Mercedes vehicles. Let's go next to the championship contender this year, Max Verstappen, once again driving a Honda Civic Type R. His teammate Sergio Perez was also driving in a Honda Type R Civic. Now, I don't even know what colour this is. Can you help me out here? Is this light blue? Is this a grey? I'm gonna go with light blue. And he doesn't drive, normally his manager, Luis Alvarez, drives the car and often drops Checo off at the swipe gates and then parks the car. Now, at this track, the car park is actually a reasonable walk from the swipe gates. It's upstairs, they have to go down some stairs through a dark car park and then come out to the swipe gates. And there weren't many fans at the entry to the swipe gates, as you can understand. That effectively is a very hard area to get to but those people who did manage to work out how to do it got themselves a selfie or an autograph if they were lucky. In fact, they've driven those cars to every race bar one. Do you know the race I'm talking about? It was the British GP when they came in in these beautiful Honda NSXs. Vintage models almost. Daniel Ricciardo came in with his trainer, Michael Italiano, and this is a Mercedes-Benz GLC worth about 55,000 pounds. And what about the other two drivers in the Red Bull camp being Yuki Tsunoda and Pierre Gasly? Once again, same cars, Honda Civic Type Rs. Lando Norris had three in his car. He had his manager, Mark Berryman, and his trainer, John Malvin. John would drive. Lando would sit in the back and passenger. They were driving a Mercedes-Benz E200D. And if you were watching my video from yesterday, you would have known that John nudged Alexandra Molina's car when he parked it on the Friday upstairs in the driver's car park. Daniel Ricciardo actually picked up the fact that they nudged, pointed it out. Lando came and had a look just to make sure he understood what was going on. Then John reversed the car and uh, separated the two, but no damage done. In the case of Esteban Ocon, he was driving this blue Colios. I don't know much about this vehicle. His teammate, Fernando Alonso, was driving this black Espace Initial People Mover. And he has done that on numerous occasions this year, that particular vehicle. Sebastian Vettel, he was staying at a motorhome and didn't need to drive anywhere. But uh, as per the last race and a couple previous, Sebastian, rides a bike in. I didn't see him on any particular day. He wasn't going through the main swipe gates, but there is a second entry, which I gather he was using, and I don't think anybody else was using that gate. Seb's teammate is Lance Stroll. Lance was driving an Aston Martin DBX, the same car he was driving at Hungary and at a lot of other races this year. Do you want better service in flight? Here's what I've done on a couple of occasions and it's worked a treat. I take a pen, take some paper with me, and I write a note to one of the cabin crew. Put it in an envelope and I give it to them as they walk past. Of course, the note is complimentary about something you've already experienced on the flight, but the chances of that person having ever received a complimentary note before are minuscule. It stands out. 
and just watch how good service becomes amazing service from there on. At some races, the drivers get a police escort, especially when the traffic is heavy. And I think that'll definitely be the case next race when we go to Zandvoort because I'm just warned that the traffic is going to be not quite as bad as perhaps France in 2018, I think it was, the first year they had that race. That was horrendous. But there are certainly going to be delays. So in that instance, I imagine police escorts will be the order of the day. And as this particular commenter said under my last video, Kimmy got a police escort during the weekend as he was always one of the last drivers to arrive, once followed by Ocon, and on Sunday, he came together with Antonio. And on the subject of Antonio, I thought his car was spectacular. Well, the paintwork. He was driving a spectacular Alfa Romeo Giulia, and I loved the color. It's metallic green, it sparkled. His teammate, Kimmy, came in in something uh, a little less auspicious. It was a black Stelvio. Nicholas Latifi arrives in big SUVs, and this time he was driving this car, a Mercedes GLC 200D. In fact, a lot of them driving diesel vehicles these days, except Lewis, of course, who's driving that electric car, and that is the only electric car I think I've seen this year. And what of George Russell? What was he driving? It was an SUV, and it would have been a Mercedes, but I can't honestly tell you because both times I saw him, he was well out of his car and heading towards the swipe gates in that upstairs car park. I think there's only two more teams to go. And if we have a look at the Alfa Rom and I've done them. <laughs> Let's have a look at Haas, shall we? Why not? Nikita Mazepin normally arrives with quite a crew and hence he will often come in in a people mover as he has done here with his white V-Class Mercedes-Benz. Retails in the UK for around 50,000 pounds. The other Haas driver, Mick Schumacher, was driving an XC40, a Volvo. And the final two cars are these two absolute rippers. Beautiful Ferraris driven by one, Charles Leclerc, and two, Carlos Sainz. So who was driving what? Well, let me tell you, Carlos Sainz was driving the one on the left, and that is a Ferrari Portofino. It's worth uh, around £175,000 in England. Shit, what's that for? What do I have to do there? Okay, sorry about that interruption. Uh, where was I? Portofino, 175k pounds. Beautiful car. Now I wasn't 100% sure on these models and I rang a couple of car dealerships, Ferrari dealerships in London, and they were hopeless. Oh, we have to get your name and details. I just, just want to show you a picture of these cars and you say the models. Oh, what's this for? In the end, I just put a post up on my Instagram story and within three minutes, eight or 10 people have given me the answers. So don't waste your time with Ferrari dealerships. And the one on the right is the Ferrari Roma. That one sells for, wait for it, wait for it. Not about the same, 170K. And Charles has driven a black one on a number of occasions this year. But that is a four seater car. And on Thursday, he came in with two passengers, one in being his uh, brother, Arthur. What were my favorite cars? I think it goes without saying the Ferraris, they're just super to look at, aren't they? But I did think that Antonio Giovinazzi's green Alfa Romeo was a real standout. You take the two Ferraris out, and I'm going to go with that as my favourite. Thanks for sticking around till the end. Now it's your chance to hit the like button. Do me a favour. Thank you in advance for doing that. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And if you'd like to join up as a member of my page, it has many benefits, including regular wallpapers, raw images and for VIP members you get even more than that you get access to some exclusive videos and other goodies. You'll find all of my digital images at ProStarPix.com for editorial or personal use. My F1 books, photo books are available at KimIllman.com along with a new range of merchandise including black bucket hats. Have I got one here? No not the new ones. And for my best images live from the track and all during the week I recommend you head to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. <sighs> And with that said, I'll say two things. Thanks for watching and stay passionate. Can you see all that crap on the floor over there?